<laughs> I'm Ziggler, the Alpha Dog. I've got the most exciting show in the world for you today. My dear friend, superstar, uh, speaking diva herself, Lisa Copeland. Yeah, you heard me. <laughs> I've got Lisa Copeland on the show. But before I get started, I'm going to turn over here to the left and I'm going to do a little housekeeping, do a little adjustments on the screen. I might sing to you. I might not. But let me be sure I got all this ready. Never seen you looking so lovely as you look tonight. Never seen you shine so bright. You are amazing. Never seen so many. I'm, I'm doing. I'm working here. Wanted to be by your side, but when you turned to me and smiled, you took my. Got it. Got it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to start. Let me introduce you to my friend, Lisa Copeland. Hello, Lisa. Hi, how are you? I'm having the best day of my entire life. You always have a good day. I've never oh. seen you have a bad day unless you're mad at somebody. And look out. Oh, my mother had a lot, lot to say about that. She says I overkill when I get mad. Oh, you and me both. Like you know, either I love you or you're dead to me. And there's nothing in the middle. That's the problem. If I get mad at somebody, I have to restrain myself because I, I overkill. I, my mother said that I would kill a pissant with a nuclear weapon. <laughs> <You know? Dang. laughs> Total devastation. Hey, Jack Bankston's on. I know I just shared it, so I'm sharing it into all my groups. Oh, wow. You, you got to share it. Everybody share this thing. Share it, share it, share Please it. Please share this broadcast because yes. there are two people here that are in total synergy. And guess what else? We're both authors. Now, you talk, what did you write? What did I write? Yeah, what did you write? Oh, well, my latest book is Turbine Her Way, The Fierce Girl's Roadmap to the Car of Your Dreams. Wait a second. The Fierce Girl's Roadmap to the Car of Your Dreams? What are you doing yep. there? Yeah, because I absolutely lifted the veil. You know, um, it's a lot of, Jim, it's a lot of my business tips and, and from being a former car dealer and, you know, so it's it's filled full of, you know, 30 years of, you know, what I did, what worked and what didn't work. 30 all, years? You I started know, right? with three? Yeah, I was in kindergarten. I was in the yeah. kindergarten class selling cars in Dallas, Texas. And I crushed it back then, let me tell you. Amazing. What did you do when you were selling cars? Uh, so I started, hold, I'm, I'm sharing you out. Hold on a second. I'm sharing, I'm sharing, sharing is caring. Oh, okay. sharing is caring. I'm making sure all of my pages are broadcasting us live. Okay, so I was the only female salesperson in Dallas, Texas in 1985 selling Chevys. Girls are selling cars. Girls selling cars, right? <laughs> I love selling cars. Girls can't do that. Yeah, rumor has it, right? Yeah. <laughs> rumor I've has hired, it. I've hired more. Well, before I get, wait, industry. wait, 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 wait. Before I get a lot of blowback on that, I've hired more women in the car business than anybody you know. I mean, that was humor. I know. <laughs> I know, which is why I was going with you on it. Because I said, you know, rumor has it that uh, you know, women aren't any good in the automotive industry. No. Rumor has it. You know, you know, girls can't do it. <laughs> girls, girls can't do it. Girls can't hang. Girls can't sell cars. I've heard it all in the last 30 years. And I talk about it <laughs> in the book. And you okay. know what? Every now and then I name names. Oh, yeah. It happens. No. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, Some I are dead, it. So I'm just all I'm doing is stomping on their grave. But yep. I wrote a nasty article about Carvana last night and I named all the names. Ooh, I want a copy of it. It's coming out in Auto Dealer, yeah. Auto Dealer yeah, Today magazine. With Carmack. Yeah. I actually, <laughs> I don't like him either. Okay, now, what's the title of your book, Real Slowly? Okay, Car Buying Her Way, subtitle, A Fierce Girl's Roadmap to the Car of Your Dreams. Where, they, where can they buy this book? Amazon. Of I am course. contributing to the delinquency of America. My book mm -hmm. is on Amazon. <laughs> I'm <laughs> author, but yes. You know, we just moved into a new house here in Atlanta. And it's three times larger than the house we moved out of. You're making too much money, friend. So, 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 so Debbie's got every day there's six Amazon trucks dropping deliveries off of different things. I mean, we are, we are totally 
it's crazy. <laughs> but like Jim, the difference between you and me is like we're gonna we're we're building, you know, we're gonna build a house someday. We're gonna downsize. What do you and the fabulous Debbie do? You you triple size. We done we downsized. I and thought, now, now we're back up size. I couldn't yeah. stand that little house. Why? It's just the two of you and Sadie. Yeah, well, the thing is, I didn't have room for my video studio. Yeah. I got a big pool table in the room next door that we just bought. I mean, you know, I've got my my Super Bowl room with the yeah, I've got three big screens in the house. Um oh 75 inches. You know, yeah, you and the, I, I need the space. <laughs> <laughs> and we, you might need the space because sweet Debbie might be like, you're going to live on this side of the house and I'm going to stay no, on this side no. of the house. No, you no, De Debbie and I are inseparable. I, inseparable. So I, I love my wife. Um, we've been married 35 years. I know. It's so awesome. I picked her up. Um, she was hitchhiking. She had her car broken down on her way to her job at Hooters. She. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. You are irreverent. You know that, right? Completely she's the, irreverent. She's the best one so far. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where is Debbie? How come she's not on today? What's up with that? Well, I ran her out of the office because when I do a broadcast, she she's over there doing all sorts of noisy things and, and Sadie snores. So I had to get Sadie out, Sadie out of the office. Oh, sweet Sadie. Well, what have you been up to? Let's talk about you. I, we talk about me all the time, but talk, talk about you. It's your show. Of course, we're going to talk about you. Oh, well, yeah. love me dearly, but still. Love me dearly. You know. okay. um, <laughs> so my most exciting thing, I think, of, of late is that um, I finally got my, my dream off the ground in a big way, Cars Her Way. And um, Whoa. yes. So you got some cars on your site? 5.4 million cars on my site. And if you want to ask with me, check it out. Carsherway.com. I need to borrow some money from you. Right? <laughs> yeah. No joke. Hey, Mabel Peralta's on. Oh, sweet Mabel. You know Mabel's been in the hospital. No, get well, Ma Mabel, please. What, no, she she's okay? been in the hospital, Jim, since since women in automotive. She had a gall she had to have her gallbladder uh, removed. No. So, yes. So Mabel won the True Car Every Woman Award for uh, for us with women in automotive. The night before she's supposed to go home, she literally lays down on the floor. She's in so much pain. And thank God for Bobby Heron. Thank Bobby, God for Bobby Heron. That is a fact. No, Bobby saved her life. Um, no. Yes. Yes. If she would not have had her gallbladder removed, she would have gone into septic, septicism, septic, I think. Mabel, put it up there, babe. And no. Bobby, yes, Bobby forced her to go to the emergency room. And the doctors told her if that would not have happened, then she would have died in the air. Her body oh, would, have, her body would have erupted and the poison would have gone through her body. Mabel, I'm Jim, hey, we, 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 we can't, we can't, do, we can't do without some Mabel here on the internet. I see her all the time. That's it, man. We got Michelle Shepard. Hi, Michelle. Jack Bankston. I don't know Jack. Andy Brewer. Hi, Andy. Oh, he's talking about my book. My book was $35 signed, $75 unsigned. Your book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 was one of my old things. I know he, that's what he's talking about over there. Oh God, I need you to be my agent. If you need yeah, $35 my book, thir $35 signed, $75 unsigned. Oh, unsigned. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want my signature? Hell with you. <laughs> oh my God. Andrew Breedlove shared this. Thank you. Everybody share this broadcast. Oh, Jack. Hey, Jeff Glackens here. We got we got a pretty good little, little group pulling it. You yeah. Know, it's, it's amazing how these Facebook broadcasts work. I might get 30, 40, 50 people on the live broadcast, but the replays will go 8,000 people. Yeah, it's insanity, right? Um, it is. But it really is the way, Jim, that people mm -hmm. communicate nowadays. You know, and you know, and it's I think it's the way it's you know, as women, especially, you know. So doing what we do, and we have 27 dealers now, 28 dealers in Austin and Houston with Cars Her Way. And so I've, I've, I've got a partner, um, a digital partner, biggest media company in the world, or literally my partners. And um, this study has come out. And women, now I, I don't have the number for men because we are Cars Her Way. So I don't really care what his way is because it's always been his way in the auto industry, right? But Wait a second. <laughs> whatever. Um, but, but women spend... And I'd love to see if you agree with this or if, if your audience agrees with this. Women spend eight hours a day on Facebook. 
That is a national stat per one of the biggest. Um, Eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. Now, I think a lot of it's got to be checking and whatever. But you know, what is the first thing? And y'all be honest. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Me? Well, I may not want to know that. But I can tell you what women do first. They check. Women. And they check. Women, yeah, they do. They yes, do. they do. Yep. And that is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm on Facebook quite a bit, but um, that's not really my generation. You know, just I'm, I'm a little different. Yeah, but you always have something to say. You know, like like it isn't like you're just like blah blah blah. I mean, you you you're very intentional on social media. Well, you know, I got 150,000 friends and followers. I look at that number and I go, wow! And they're all car people. You know, it's. it's it's, it's, it's so cool. There are over 3 billion people on Facebook worldwide. Oh, God. And 60. How, uh, how come I keep seeing the same 10 people in my feed then? Where are the rest of them? That's what I, I need to know. They're lurking. They're <laughs> trolls. I mean, they're out there. They're searching you. They're stalking you. 68% of them are American adults. Yeah. How many women? You're obviously looking at something there. I didn't look at women. I don't have a women's stat. No. Oh. You know, girls, you know. Just saying. <laughs> what else? Okay, so let me tell you. Oh, girls, uh, cars her way. Tell me, how do you get how do you get in touch if you want to sign up for this magnificent program? Well, you don't get to sign up. You're chosen. And oh. so, uh-huh. Yeah, so um, we, we've launched in Austin and Houston. And because those are markets that I'm personally very familiar with. For those of you who don't know me, I was a car dealer here in Austin. Uh, for seven years. And so I know who the players are in every brand. So in every brand, there's only one of every brand in each market, one dealer that I have personally vetted that I know personally, eyeball to eyeball. Um, that's it. And, and it's, I put a message on the screen. What's the message saying? How do you get chosen? <laughs> You get chosen because you're a good person to do business with. Jim, there are so many bad ones out there or so many that just don't care because they're so worried about counting their money, but mm -hmm. um, they don't care about the culture of their dealership. They don't care about women consumers. They don't care about hiring women. They don't care about retaining women. They're just in it to, to make money and to, to monetize women because the stat from 2018 is that women bought 9.5 million cars at at 54 so so we bought 54 percent of the cars the new cars purchased last year in 2018 the number is 9.5 million we spent 200 billion b billion in cars and in service you ever see home alone the movie yeah ah uh, but <laughs> but but less than 10 yeah. percent of the sales floor in any given dealership now there's always the exceptions to the rule but less than 10 percent are women. And if a woman's on the sales floor, she, there, it's a 90% turn rate in a domestic store within 12 months. So it's like, wait a minute, we're the biggest consumer, we're the biggest influencer, but we don't want to work there. How come? You're, you're, you're having babies and cooking? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will tell you this, the same gal that's having babies and cooking, she's working at Nordstrom, she's working retails hours, she's working at Best Buy, she's doing real estate, she's doing anything other than hanging out at the car dealership. So, you know, I'm messing with you. I know you are. That's why, that's why I'm just talking past you. Cause I love you. Um, so, so the women, the women out there, you know, they don't see the opportunity in the automotive industry because they don't get to the right dealers. So the dealers on my site are the right dealers. I was just with, that's why I was racing to get here. I was just with one of the right dealers in Austin, Texas. Uh, my good friend, Jim DeMeo, Charles Mon Toyota. I mean, he said to me, we need women. I, I need you to hire four women. Like Lisa, go, go get the women right on top of above and beyond, you know, them working with us from a marketing strategy and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I mean, the guys are always calling me literally the guys, cause it's all guys. Um, we have, we have one female dealer in Houston. She's a BMW dealer, Maria. She's fantastic. Um, but overall, it is men knowing what they need to do, but they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to really market effectively to women. They don't know how to hire women. They don't know how to retain women. And that's that's where Cars Her Way stands in the gap. And we handle that. And um, we're doing a good job, I might add. <laughs> well, so what, what is the Facebook page? page? Is it um... uh, Cars Her Way? 
Cars Her Way, just like mm -hmm. it sounds. Yeah, just Instagram, Facebook, we're uh, LinkedIn. Carsherway.com is a website. Every car in the United States of America is on it. But if you put in, um, but you can scroll down and you can see who our trusted dealer partners are in, in these, in these two markets. Um, you know, we have, we have, we have great, I, I have two radio shows on iHeart um, in, in the two biggest news stations in market, one in, one in Houston on KTRH 740. It's a one hour call in show. And then in Austin, uh, AM 1200, the zone. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, they're both, uh, they're both uh, Fox news at the top of the hour. Uh, one's a news station, one's a sports station, uh, but they're iHeart radio properties. And, you know, my work yeah. is never done. Jim, it's never done. Never done. Never done. Mm -mm. Amazing. Um, I bought a car yesterday. I know you did. I well, I, it, it is so funny because I've never owned an import automobile in my life. That's why I was so shocked when you told me. <clears throat> well, I've always had contracts with either General Motors or Ford. Mm -hmm. And Right now, the, the the hierarchy of Ford are great friends of mine. I've got them all on cell phone speed dial, which, you know, I'm talking about the top guys at Ford. I mean, I have been a Ford guy, and, and I've had nine Escalades. I've had as many town cars, um, uh, as many Corvettes, you know, just um, through the years. But I, bu I bought an Audi. I know. It just, I, like, it's just, I mean, I love, I love the A7. Like, I love the Audi. I think it's beautiful. The Q7, Q7, yeah. Yeah, but I just I, I don't I just don't see you in it. That's all. Well, I you're going to in an Escalade, you know the you know an av an Aviator Lincoln. You know, I just uh, I actually have a new partner now with Lincoln, and um, I was at the dealership the other day, and I was like, oh my god, this car's gorgeous, like gorgeous. Lincoln has come out with some world class cars, but they have. I can't get in and out of the Navigators and the Escalades anymore. Oh. my knee my knees are stuck. You you see me? Yeah, you know. I've got all those weightlifting injuries and such. I, I can't do it. Right. So I, that's why I don't drive the Corvettes anymore. But the the Aviator has had a couple of delays in production, and I got tired of waiting for it. I called Mark Lenave at home Saturday, senior vice president of Ford Marketing. I called Mark at home. And I said, Mark, I got to apologize to you. I bought an Audi. What did Mark say? He, he said, well, well, Jim, I, I know we've had some delays on the car. He said, I, I wish you would have waited. He said, it's a fabulous car, but I can fully understand. And I, now you can understand, Mark and I go way back. We are great friends. <clears throat> and um, they've hired me any number of times to advise them on marketing for, for the corporation. You know, I mean, back when he was with General Motors. Right. And uh, <laughs> it was kind of interesting. Uh, but we're still, we still got a Ford and family. So I'm not totally, totally. That's right. Yeah. Just because they hired you doesn't mean you have to drive all of their products. I have for years, you know, it's been that way. Well, what else, what else are you up to? I know you're, I know you're speaking at some of the events. Uh, you're, you're a world-class professional speaker. You are a traveling girl. Tell me about it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, um, one of the things I have done is I have peeled back the speaking engagements quite a bit because I'm 1 million percent laser focused <clears throat> on our dealer partners in Houston and in Austin. But I will be in Nashville uh, with Mr. Lundy <clears throat> with his Grow Your Business for God's Sake. And I don't know, I, I, I think you know most of the players on the stage, Danelle Delgado and Brian Benstock. But do you know my dear friend Sharon Lecter, the co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad? No, I do not. You would be obsessed with her. I have to introduce you to to, to each other, and um, and Sharon Lecter will be there, and uh, so it's it's going to be a great event. And I, you know, I I think Glenn's on to something. I I don't think I know he is, and so I always want to support my 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 dear friend. But I like I, Glenn I, I, Lundy a lot. Um, I love him. He's my matter dear. of fact. We got Sean Hayes on the sidebar here. Do you know that rascal? Hi, Sean Hayes. Yeah, yeah, he's up there. Uh, Mark Easter uh, showed up. Um, we got Max Clem. We got some some oh, good, hello, some good. Yeah, we got some good people. Denise Masters. Um, yeah, let's see. Jess Jesse Miller. Oh yeah, the, the <laughs> a lot of girls showing up here. That's right. That's my tribe. Those are my people. Women in automotive. Let's go. Um, yeah. So, anyways, but to answer your question, I am railing back uh, the speaking gigs. Um, you know what I have found, Jim, in life when I've been the most focused is when I've been the most successful. 
So I think about like I'm in the mode right now is uh, the same mode as when we relaunched Fiat to the U.S. You know, we were the first uh, dealer in the country to open. And, you know, we're here in town and all of a sudden people are like, oh, my God, I love that Fiat. It was a rust bucket when I had one in the 80s. And, and but I loved it. And then or, um, oh, yes, I drove a Fiat um, in Italy on my honeymoon, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, OK, whoa, whoa, I don't care about your stories. Are you going to buy a car? Are you going to buy a car today? And, you know, but just us being laser focused on the goal, which was to be the number one dealer in the country. And so I'm back there again. But now I've got 27 dealers and they're my partners and dealerships that that it is my job to move the needle um, for helping them capture the most important customer in the world, if you ask me, which is the female customer in their market. There's a you reason should. women hate to buy cars, and that's because they go to bad dealerships. If you go to a you good dealership- You should have seen you. me in dealerships yesterday or Saturday. What dealerships were you in? I'm not going to name the names because I want to talk right. about them. Okay. Okay. I ended up buying from Jim Ellis. Oh, um, I like Jim Ellis very much. You know, I was their keynote speaker for class, their class operation. They've been around forever. They they owned half the dealerships in Atlanta. Yes, yes um, I had breakfast with him. But I I was the keynote speaker this year for their big employee. They hired me to come in and, and talk to I don't know a thousand of their employees. I bought several cars from Jim Ellis. Yeah, um, good group. You know, absolutely classic organization. And yep. um, Women we, and we we shop we shopped we shopped. Yeah. And it was kind of funny because um, I walk into a, a one dealership and the general sales manager, I, I asked to see the general sales manager. I generally do that. And he didn't know who I was. Ouch. So I'm already pissed off. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> you know, excuse You're dead me. to me, bro. You're dead to me. <laughs> It wasn't, I'm the quite, Godfather. You're it wasn't quite that bad to use car manager. You're Jim Ziegler. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, rede <laughs> redemption. <laughs> redemption. But they, they didn't have what I wanted. So then I went to the BMW dealership. Oh, okay. And I looked at X5 because I'm looking at that size of SUV that I can get in and out of. Yeah. So I looked at S5. Oh, they, they are so proud of those cars. Mm -hmm. He hit me with a number that uh, it choked me. And, you know, I could buy the dealership if I chose, but still. Right. The number they hit me. And then I got down the street and realized he'd kept my driver's license. Oh. <laughs> One thing about when Jim Ziegler goes shopping for a car, they either lay down and, and give me the money or they look at me like a trophy buck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't yeah. think they look at you like. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that they just want to say that you bought your car there. So that's or helpful. they want to say I laid Ziegler away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, I, I'm going to tell you, I know that that does not happen. Did you trade a car in? No, no, no. And the funny thing is, the, the other the other Audi dealership I went to. Put me on a payment grid. What? And they knew who I was. <laughs> Oh my God. He said, with this down payment, you'd have this payment with this down. What the hell? I can pay cash for the car. I don't care about that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, know your audience, people. Know your audience. Know, you know your customer. I got $100,000 on my left hand. Pay attention. Right. <laughs> you know, right. And so we walked on that one. Yes. <laughs> and I called Jim Ellis right. back. What what does Miss Debbie think? Like, is, is that the car she wanted, or did you make that decision? It's my car. That's not what I asked you. Well, Miss Debbie you, was with me, and yes, we made the decision together. Okay. She, well, I was gonna say, like, you know, just going to my stats. I mean, did she influence you? Like, well, let's say Debbie would have been like, uh, I don't know, I don't like it. I'm not feeling it. No, 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 no. She she actually uh, chose the color and the trim. Okay, good. I was I was pretty dead set on on Audi when I left the house. I'd done my research and okay, you know I I, I pretty well had said Audi, but now when it comes to the color and the trim and um, the internal things in the in the vehicle, she really had a lot of input. She really didn't have a lot of input on on brand. Okay, you know, De Debbie and I don't do anything. You know, you know, wives are deal killers. <laughs> I teach that in every seminar. Jim, no. Wives, here I am. I'm right here. Wives are deal killers. And if you were in the car business, you need to understand that. That's not a derogatory. 
Okay. If anybody kills the deal, it's generally the wife. Yep. And the reason the wife kills the deal is because in most U.S. households, she is the family bookkeeper. Absolutely. She knows the finances. She knows what they, you know, she, she's the deal killer. If you don't sell to the wife, if you don't, you know, how many times have had the wife stay in the car while the husband shopped? And, and, and here I see my sales. Car dealerships, which is why she would do that. And here's my, and here's, and here's my salesperson out there. I'm a manager. Here's my salesperson out there up to their belt buckle and the hood of an F-150. They're both looking at the engine and, and, and Lucille's sitting over there in the car with the engine running. I got to get her involved. Right. You know, and, and so many salespeople don't get that. No. I, I, I habitually and traditionally shake hands with a woman first. As you should. As I should. <laughs> you, know, you know, this is what I do for a living, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of playing tongue in cheek with you because, because I know that you get it. And I also know how you have really promoted women, uh, even when it wasn't cool to hire women mm. in the automotive industry. And, um, but it's, it's still, it, it's alive and well out there. It's alive and well. I mean, as many dealerships as I visit, that's my mm -hmm. job is to go talk to car dealers, you know, and every one of them looks at me the same way. They're like, you know, we'd love to hire women. I wish we could do more, but we can't. No, you're choosing not to. You can. The dealer I was just mm -hmm. today, earlier, he said, yeah. here's, here's the budget. Here's what you can do. Go find me the women and I'll pay, Lisa. I will pay them. I will give them something different than what is out there in the market today. So if you're in Austin, Texas, and you want to get in the car business, call me. Um, because, you know, they're willing, you know, the good dealers understand that that is the gap. That's what's missing in the automotive industry today. And the bad ones are like, you know, it's business as usual. Whether, you know, whether we get women or not, mm -hmm. we're going to be fine. We're still going to sell cars. But that's not a good longevity. Yeah. Plan. It just isn't. You know, it's amazing. Um do you remember Tammy LeBlue? I do. I you love know, Tam, Tammy was my protege. Yeah. Did you did you know that whole story? I did. I did. Yeah. You know, her dealer paid me $25,000 to come into that dealership and train one employee. Okay. I did not know that piece to the story. For my viewers out there that are watching, that, that I, I would do that. I would do that. So... She made $400,000 a year, three years in a row as a salesperson. Wow. Yeah. She was such she, a great lady. She was number two salesperson in all of Nissan. There was one person out there that she never could quite get beyond. And then they brought me back and paid me another $25,000 to train her how to be a manager. Really? Yeah. And I was the only training, formal training she ever had. Okay, so let me let me take you back to the salesperson piece. What what would you tell us? Because I, I know there's going to be a lot of people that are women are not that are going to watch this. What? How would you train a salesperson today? Just like high level on. Because I know that you get a lot of money to do that, but just like what would be the the top like boom booms out there for the sales managers that are watching? Because what's happening, Jim, is that the salespeople are just getting turned on. I mean, they're just getting sent to the floor. Okay, you they're, know. they're getting sent to the floor. Nobody sure. knows how to prospect anymore. Right. I mean, they, they, they're all with a camera in their face. They all wanted to have a camera in their face. They all they all think that this internet in front of us is the only way. Right. I have a standing bet with any human being on earth that wants to put up enough money. I can walk out of any dealership in the country that has any amount of population. Eight o'clock in the morning. If it's good weather. Not a Sunday, not a holiday. Those right. are the three stipulations. Good weather, not a Sunday, not a holiday. I can walk out of your dealership at 8 a.m. And I will come back and deliver a stranger before the sun sets. Mm -hmm. I believe I, that. I can, I can do that every day of my life. Right. And I'm, I'm a prospecting fool. And we don't know how to do that anymore. People, people know, I go on people's Facebook pages and it doesn't even mention they're in the car business. Right. I mean, you're swimming. People say, well, Ziegler, where do I find customers? You're swimming in a sea of ups. Right. <laughs> They're all around you. Try the interstate at five o'clock. There's, there's ups out there bumper to bumper. 
Well, and you know, think about like Ollie Rita. You know, he he's he's not all over Facebook. He has built. He's the number one salesman in the world. Broke the world sales record for anybody who's been under a mushroom in the car business and doesn't yeah. know how. But he did it by community. You know, mm -hmm. by building a community within his community that is a referral source. He does not do. He 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 doesn't he doesn't walk around doing Facebook lives to sell cars. Now, do I do I think it has its place? I do. Uh, you know, but do I think that should be your only strategy? Absolutely not. You know, you've no. got to go and what I called, which is what made us number one, was taking it to the streets, going into the community, finding your tribe, and you know, and and to your point of prospecting, you know, and and talking to people because if if the person in front of you is not looking to buy a car, they probably know somebody that is. There are three questions. No, oh, I'm giving away my best stuff. I know, okay. and I'm taking notes right now so that I can. There are three notes. questions I will ask a complete stranger. The first one is, when are you going to buy your next car? Mm -hmm. Not if, not would you like to. I'm writing this down. When are you going to buy your next car? Mm -hmm. And the second question, of course, is who do you know? And do you have a friend? Do you have a, a coworker? You got a relative? Who do you mm -hmm. know? And the third question is, would you consider selling me the car you're driving? Mm. This is a beautiful car. Would you consider selling it to us? Now, the, the last car I sold was two, it was two years ago. I was at Tallahassee Dodge in Tallahassee, Florida. I had just taught a class on prospecting. I'm standing out in front of the dealership on the break with a 21-year-old salesperson, a young kid from, from the city. And we're talking about how, to, how this career is going to be good for him and such. And a customer pulls up in a Silverado, a 19, uh, excuse me, a 2011 Silverado. Now, remember, this is a Dodge store. Okay. So the customer says to me, we're standing under a shade tree, it was August. He said, oh, sir, where's your parts department? I said, sir, that's a beautiful truck. He said, yeah, thank you. And I said, you've really kept it well. What year is it? He said, 2011. Let's fast forward to a $15,000 deal. Let's fast forward to delivering him in the ultra ram loaded up truck. And it was just, the guy just wanted an air filter for his Dodge at home. And we made this, and, and the beauty of it was, we had a contest running in that dealership that month. Top gross of the month keeps it. 21 years old. Wow. <laughs> now you can ask anybody who's been at that dealership more than a year about that story. I mean, you, you don't take my word for it. It's, it's legendary. <laughs> okay, so yeah, no, and I, I agree. And you know, and what's funny is you and I have been in the car business enough years, and I know that you've heard this before, and I've heard it some. Well, that's old school. And I'm like, no, that's real school. That's school. Right? You cannot replace the basics of selling and the basics of human communication and human contact with a camera in your face walking around talking to it. Can that be an element of your marketing? Absolutely. But to your point, I, I mean, I wrote down this, like all of my years and I'm, you know, I, I would, I would sell with you toe to toe, my friend. Um, you know, would you consider selling me the vehicle you're driving? Like, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. How did I never say that to one human? Well, you know what the people say? Like, would you trade it in? No, when you trade yeah. it in, you're yep. selling, you're trying to sell them something. Yep. Yeah. But when you, my, oh, my man. My manager at Superior Nissan, when I started selling cars, was Ken Vargas. He's still in the business. And every Saturday, Ken Vargas and I used to sit down with a newspaper, classifieds. That's the way cars were advertised in 1976. Yes. And we started circling cars. He said, call this one, call that one. People advertising their cars. And I'd, I'd call people up. Hello, sir. My name is Jim Ziegler. I'm a a sales and re uh, advertising representative for Superior Nissan. And my manager, Mr. Ken Vargas, saw your car advertised in today's paper and we'd like to buy it. Love it. Uh, 
And they, well, I'm asking 8,000. Sir, I don't know about 8,000. All I know is we'll pay stupid money for that car. We'll pay more money than you'll ever be offered again. If you'll come here, I won't waste your time. You'll be here less than five minutes. We'll have you cash offer. Hmm. I sold so many cars doing that. Yeah, because it's like, okay, I'm going to buy your car, but what am I going to drive home in? Hmm. <laughs> and, and, even, and even the ones that didn't buy our car, they eventually end up doing business with a dealership. Yeah. Today, I, I use Auto Trader, Craigslist, st same difference. Call those people, the, the private sellers, offer to buy their vehicle. And well, when they come in, you say, well, well now, well, that's the problem, you know. I, I say, sir, I bet you're getting a lot of calls from people that didn't buy your car. Yeah, we got a lot of people calling, our, not the right car. Well, what are you doing with those phone numbers? I'll pay you $5 each for every one that you give me. Smart. <laughs> See, Jim, there is something to people like you and me that have been around a long time. And, you know, and sometimes you got these young ones that are like, oh, you know, you haven't done that. I'm like, I've done more. I have forgotten more than you'll ever know, young one. Right. I mean, don't you just want to say that sometimes? It's like, do never, ever discount wisdom. I can sell cars to waiters all day long. Yeah. There isn't a restaurant in the world you can't sell a car in. Right. I, I was with Kent Bozarth at Bozarth dealerships in Denver. And Kent and I were having having lunch at one of the one of the restaurants, and I asked the waiter, "When are you go buy your next car?" I'm looking right now. Well, what are you looking for? And I mean, we went all through this scenario. I sold two cars in that restaurant that day with a the dealer there, just off of that first question: "When are you go buy your next car?" No, I love that gold <laughs> out there that are listening to this, that are resharing this, that are watching this. So many, uh, I know that if Jim and I are both have mentored or continue to mentor. Mm -hmm. Gold, when are you going to buy your next car? You ought to ask every single human that comes in contact with you. If you're a car salesperson, a car sales professional, if you're a sales manager, if you're a general manager, if you're a dealer principal, right? No, we're all car salesmen at some level, right? When are you going to buy your next car? Jim, I'm going to use it because I represent all these stores. When Which Debbie and I were dating. Car? When are you going to buy your yeah. next car? When Debbie and I were dating back in the 80s. Now, you know, Debbie wasn't up. That is a true story. No, that's a true story. She I wasn't up. That. I think I've heard that. We only had one rule in those days. Sell the car first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all those hours, where are you going to meet women? <laughs> you know? so, you are so irreverent. This is why I love you. I was still a salesperson at that time. I had not yet become a manager. And we're, we're dating and uh, we go to the, the movies. And that's a little hole in the... Uh, I'd like to get two tickets for Godfather Five. Right. Uh, yes, man. When are you going to buy your next car? <laughs> <laughs> Little guy, you know what? Worked out okay for you. So these young ones, the old ones, and everyone in the middle should be listening to this and taking notes. Y'all, I wrote it down. It's in green ink, so you can't see it. I wrote down what he said. Every one of you should, too. It's 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 the real deal. Yep. It's the real deal. I got more war stories than we got time to, to do about when that has worked for me. Right. Yeah, you know, I've sold so many cars with manual prospecting just in my normal travels in the industry. But people are not willing to do the work. That's the problem, Jim. They're not willing to do the work. When I sit with these dealers who I love, I love my clients, otherwise you're not my client. If I don't like you, mm -mm, never gonna work together. Um, but that being said, you know, and, and they're so frustrated. They're so frustrated about, you know, what do we do? Should we spend more money on this? Should we spend, I'm like, no, you should be out in the community. You should be out shaking hands, kissing babies. And now I'm going to add to asking every human, you know, when are you going to buy your next car? It's just that sip one. It is. And, and, you know, when I do, when I hire people for a BDC, when I was hiring phone centers before there was really an internet. Right you know, Tom Stuker type phone centers, if you can recall. Sure. And the the profile of person I would hire was a mature woman, retired flight attendant or retired airlines reservations agents were preferred. Right. You want people that really do well on the phones? Get get a airlines re reservations agent that used to work in the long hours. Yes. And the pressure of someone screaming at them. They're trained. Yeah. Good idea. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Well, 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 cars her way. Yes. Cars her way dot com. Okay. Dot com. Yep. And we got to be sure that they see that. I'm going to take that share of the broadcast off for a second. 
Yeah, carsherway.com. Let's carsherway.com. Is that look what it looks like? That's what it looks like, my friend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's leave that up for a couple minutes and everybody share this broadcast too, by the way. Yes, sharing is caring. You you know, you you are such a dynamic person. You've done so much. I mean, you've you you, you sold a no, number one fiat dealer in the universe. Yeah, that was the top yeah. midget in the automotive industry for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I were I worked for some really large dealerships in the day. I worked for Dyer and Dyer Volvo when we went from 40 units a month to 850 units a month in a year and a half. That's amazing. And I, I wish I could say I did that, but I was part of a team that did that. There were five, there were five managers. I, I wasn't even the department head at that dealership. I was one of the F and I managers, but we, it was Camelot. We, we were just absolutely. And then I worked for Potamkin. Oh yeah. And, and at Potamkin, our Cadillac dealership was doing 500 units a month on a three acre lot. That's unbelievable because my, my dealership was on four acres and that was tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can't even imagine doing that much volume on, on four acres or on five acres. That's. Oof. Oh, it was, it was amazing. But Potamkin was just so far ahead. They had 98 dealerships in the day, which um, was the largest. Uh, who large, did they end up selling to? What's that? Who did they end up selling to? Well, let's see. Who, they who, sold, didn't they? Well, actually, um, Pat Domenicone was the, 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 the managing partner. Okay. And when they closed down the Atlanta Potamkin operation, uh, Pat Domenicone's son uh, started a new Cadillac dealership, Classic Cadillac. Oh, okay. And it, that's basically, that's where the franchise ended up. Okay. That, that dealership was became a shopping mall. And... Um, our Chrysler dealership, that was a, a, that was weird because that was CarMax's first point. Boo. That was the first. I, I on CarMax. Chrysler, Chrysler sort of double crossed everybody. That was when Chrysler gave a franchise. That was the first public company to own any dealership. So CarMax owned a CJDR store. They still do. Are you serious? Yeah. I was on the well, National Dinner Council of FCA for four and a half years, and I did not know that story. Okay, well, I'm wondering if it's still CDJR, but it was um, it was it was our our Plymouth our, our Chrysler Plymouth Point. It was Potamkin's Chrysler Plymouth Point, and they awarded it to Carmax. Ugh. Yeah, and um, I'm sure they still have the franchise. I know the the, the I had Carmax. no idea that Carmax had. Um, had new car franchises. I mean, I've never even thought that they would, but it, I mean, it makes sense. They have, they have the pockets. You know, I worked with Lynn Hickey Dodge when they were the number one dealership in the world. I wish I could say I did that. They, they did that by themselves, but I did some training there. And um, <laughs> Lynn Hickey sold, sold the, the Guinness book of records, 2,817 units in June of 94. Dang. Yeah. That's the Guinness book of retail. Yeah. And uh, the Guinness Guinness people were on the lot. I was in and out of there. Um, we we had a young wholesaler come through there and, and didn't even have a, this wholesaler didn't even have a franchise yet. And he was taking that Lynn Hickey training and he later on became a dealer. Well, what's his name? Billy Facillo. Okay. <laughs> he was a wholesaler. And, and the funny thing was, um, cross-continent retailers bought Lynn Hickey Dodge for some ridiculous, stupid number, like $50 million. God. And then within a month, Auto Nation bought cross-continent retailers. So Auto Nation owned Lynn Hickey Dodge. Right. They never sold more than 100 units a month again and closed the store. I'm telling you. <laughs> number one dealership in history. Wow. Yes. Like that's incredible. So when I was in Dallas, my first job was Jim Johnson Chevrolet. And at that point, at least for a year, we were the number one domestic dealer in the country. Of course, Longo was our, this was in 86, right? So I don't know if you knew Jim Johnson in Dallas, but we were, I mean, just to give people perspective on that. I mean, we were selling 1200 new cars, new 
Chevys, trucks, conversion vans. Huge number. Big huge number. number. We did. We did. Billy, Billy Fasol, huge. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, yeah. your guy did double that. Like, that's outrageous. That is. Lynn, Lynn Hickey Dodge, and I, I, I don't take credit for anything they did. I did some training there. But um, Lynn Hickey Dodge, you know, they were selling 2,000 cars almost every month. And they had that one month where they sold 2817. Right. And that is the Guinness Book of Records. That's it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Um I I was I was consulting um Tobin Dodge <laughs> in the That's day. My friend, Josh Tobin. Josh you, Tobin. You were probably consulting with his dad, weren't you? Or was it with Josh? No, Rich Rich Aikman. Mm. Rich Aikman was the general manager. Um and Rich is with NCM these days. Okay. But, yeah, it was Tobin Dodge. That was another three acre lot selling 800 units a month. They are no joke. They are still just crushing it. It was amazing. You stand on the balcony and you look down, it was like an anthill. Yeah. And the Blue Genie. I don't know if you remember the Blue Genie. <laughs> still there, Jim. I'm, I actually went out and, and did some training and stuff for, for Josh Tobin, who sat on National Dealer Council with me. So we're very good friends. I went out there and I'm like, Oh my God. I put it on Facebook like a month ago because it came up on my time hop. I'm like, the blue genie is still here. And he's like, yep. And we did like the blue genie dance and Oh yeah, still there. Oh, uh, and they did that, that infomercial at two o'clock in the morning. Oh yes. They were drinking tubs of Red Bull. I remember. <laughs> it was <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you like how the world has changed. Right. It was amazing. Um, so, so I have, I was where I was consulting prestige Ford in Dallas when they were selling upwards of a thousand units every month. And yeah. we had, we had one month where we sold 1700. Isn't that Randall Reed? <clears throat> That's Randall Reed. Yep. And I, um, I, I worked with uh, their other store park cities for Je Jeff Enright is a great friend of mine, the general manager partner. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he was with Westway Ford, but I was working with Westway. Yeah. So it's funny, like, like you and I know so many of the same people because we've uh, we've uh, been around forever, right? <laughs> well, uh, I hate to say that. Um, I see this forty under forty; it really pisses me off that there isn't an eighty under eighty. <laughs> well, you know, what's crazy is that a very good friend of mine is one of the recipients, Apollo Chang, and uh, he's great, great operator. And but I was literally laughing. I'm like, God, forty under 40, 50 under forty. Like, what the hell? Like, what what what's out there for the rest of us? Is all I have to say. I was looking for 80 under 80. I'll tell you. Just <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, um, I think under 80, I think it would be eight under 80 because that's all that's left. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wins. Just the patient trophies. <laughs> John, John Bleakley retired last week. I was so mad. Oh, John Bleakley uh, sold his dealership and retired. I've been training him since he was 17. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And now he's retiring. Quit it. You know. Yeah. People uh, are retiring. You know, um, you know, Ross Perot just died. And I, I tell the story in my book, Car Buying Her Way, available on Amazon. Um, but I, I tell the story about how I upped Ross Perot, Dallas, Texas, 1985 or 86. He walks in and he drives up in a Caprice Classic with vinyl seats. And so there's like we had to stand in line to get an up. And all the guys were like, I'm not helping because because EDS it was in Dallas. EDS was in our backyard. They had just bought General Motors. So all the EDS people would come in and everybody hated them because they were such like geeks. So this little guy with big ears comes in, Caprice Classic. And they, I was like 10 in line. They're like, you help him. I'm like, OK. And he walks in and he's like, my name is Ross Perot. And I don't remember all the details, but that's semi what happened. I'm like, oh, OK, because I didn't know who it was. <laughs> and he said, um, he said, I'm just here to, to to look at the new Caprice Classic because we're going to be ordering 200 of them. And I just thought I'd come over here on my lunch break. I'm still not knowing who this guy is. I go upstairs, go to the fleet department, bring him, bring them down. And um, I got like a $5,000 bonus, which back then was like getting 50. Yeah. Also, I said hello to the little guy. So then um, I voted for him for president. I, th I thought, you know, I'm his car salesman. I'm voting for him for president. So there you have it. That is my I, I consulted Larry Lewis Ford in Memphis, Tennessee, who was the number one dealer in a, probably in the history of Ford. You ever heard of Larry Lewis Ford? No. Nobody has. Larry Lewis Ford 
He didn't have a Facebook page? <clears throat> no, I mean, this This is crazy. <laughs> Larry, Larry, Larry. In the world without one of those. Larry Lewis <clears throat> was the number one fleet dealer in the world. And the reason for it was back in the, I guess it might have been the 80s. There was the Greyhound bus station company is in Memphis. Okay. Or was in Memphis. So the heir of the Greyhound bus station company was starting a new company. The profile of person. <clears throat> and he, and he went to um, one of the dealerships there, Hall Dobbs. And Dobbs wouldn't underwrite his credit. They wouldn't sign the back of the contract for a couple delivery vehicles. Sure. So the, Larry Lewis took a flyer on this guy and, and signed the paper for him to get a fleet of delivery vehicles for his new company. And to the day Larry Lewis sold the dealership, passed away, he still got every piece of fleet business worldwide from that guy's company. It was a little startup called Federal Express. <laughs> How's that for a great story? That's a good story. See, Larry, uh, yeah. these other ones don't have these stories, Jim. <laughs> have the stories. You live long enough. You do this long enough. You got the stories. Yeah, Larry, the story. Larry Lewis had the Federal Express fleet account. He had to kiss the paper for FedEx. <laughs> right? Kiss it. Remember that? When he got him started. Uh, CarsHerWay.com. Yes. You're speaking in Nashville at... Uh, grow your business for God's sake. Um, Brian Benstock will be speaking. Sharon Lecter, which I need to introduce you to. Um, Danelle, I love Brian Benstock. Yes, yes, he is I a very. Think Brian guy. Benstock is brilliant. Well, Brian Benstock sits on the advisory board of Cars Her Way, so there you have okay, it. Okay, so you you got to you got to have somebody with that's some horsepower there. That really he is, is horsepower. He is legit, <clears throat> and also a very good friend, a good and loyal friend for sure. So you're slowing down the speaking end of things. I am. I am. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm laser focused on, um, on my dealers. It's a lot of work. I have a lot of car dealers that are counting on us to move the needle. And so um, I need to be in Houston or in Austin more, more than not. And then, and then I have a radio show on the two biggest stations in Austin and Houston, the two biggest news stations on iHeartRadio. On Sundays, so I have to be in Austin, Texas, in in at iHeart on Sundays, Sunday mornings. So my, oh my life changed, slowing down, yeah. slowing down. I traveled, I traveled two hundred days a year for for close to thirty years. That would be terrible, just terrible. You know, we had Debbie and I had forty employees. We had six thousand square feet of upscale office space. We had half of the first floor of a major building in Atlanta. I mean, it was all up to look at dire, doctor, lawyer, professional quality furnishings and, you know, payoli desks. And I mean, it was wonderful. And let's go back like two, 2006. And my billing was $10,000 a day at that time. And I was, I was a billing day? over a or day, oh a my day, God. my personal billing. Oh, oh, was, oh, was oh 10, you're billing. Okay. I, I, yeah. I, I, I was billing. I was billing ten thousand a day. Wow! For my time, plus first class travel. I don't fly in the back of no planes. Right. You know, I don't even know what goes on back there. I, I look you back in the back. I, 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 I look. I look back in the back of a plane one time. Look like a prison car. <laughs> People are like groveling for peanuts. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, it's awful. Oh. Yeah, anyway, I don't know what they do back there. But anyway, you know, ten thousand a day plus first class travel, and I was billing twelve days a month personally. And I had two employees making 300,000 a year. Wow. And um, we, we, we did, it wasn't the record setting numbers, but it was like $5 million at that, you know, annually at that point. Sure. You know, pretty, pretty decent little income. And October 15th, 2008, when the economy crashed, Debbie and I were in London. We were buying a franchise for Academy, which was the British version of Facebook. Oh, wow. I wrote the check and the economy crashed in the U.S. while we were there. Wow. 
I came back, laid off all the employees, shut down the offices after 30 years. Oh. And Debbie and I have not had employees since. And I gave the, fr- I, I just forfeited the deposit. I didn't even take the franchise. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we, and it, it, it was really amazing to watch Debbie and I take over the functions of all those employees. And, you know, the conferences we do today, the internet battle plans coming up in Atlanta in, in September. Right. The 9th and 10th. We'll have about 200 attendees. We'll have 20 sponsors, 20 speakers. And Debbie and I do all of that ourselves with no staff. Really? Yeah. Do you have volunteers or anything? We'll get some volunteers for sign up for registration, right. but yeah. That, my goodness. We sell it. We promote it. We Debbie's a meeting planner. So she, she books the hotels and she, as she puts these things together, I sell it. And we got some of the best, we got, you know, the reputation internet oh, battle plan is strong. Oh, yes, absolutely. And that, that, so we got one coming up, internetbattleplan.com folks. Well, Lisa, what else do we need to tell people about you and what you're doing? I don't know. Just I can keep you on forever. You're just a pleasure to speak to. Oh, thank you. No, I I think it's great. You know, I mean, I just you know, um, you know, check out carsherway.com. You know, those of you who live in central in Texas, you know, or you know people in Texas, you know, encourage them. And and frankly, I mean, you can shop every piece of inventory in the country. Um, but we're really, really laser focused on Austin and Houston and proving out the, the business model. Um, it's it's working great. I've got dealers. Blo- we had so many leads after this weekend. They're blowing me up right now. I mean, ugh, it's crazy, but it's all good. And um, I just, you know, I just think that, you know, I guess my, my, my piece of advice before I left would all of you would be is that you need to listen to the gyms of the world and the leases because we've been around long enough to know what works and what doesn't work. And um, there's just so much out there you know, with these kids and they're like, oh, well, they're old school. They're this. No, I mean, we are the school. Like we, we have <laughs> the school of hard knocks. We wrote the books, people. I literally say that on my radio show. They're like, well, I don't know if you know the answer to my question. I'm like, I wrote the book. Of course I know the answer to your question. I've if got you're... vice presidents of major automotive corporations flying their staff to Atlanta to meet with me I know. to advise them on their marketing. I mean, I know it's not about old school, new school. You are so correct. Yep. But you know, but I I just, that, that would be my advice to the young ones out there is to listen to your elders. I mean, I go into dealerships. They're like, well, you know, it might've been, I'm like, I sold my dealership three years ago. Okay. I, I have not been out of the business 30 years and I have more, I'm in dealerships more now than when I was a dealer. I have so many clients. I know what's going on. But I also, you know, success leaves clues. And I also know, I took notes on what you said today because the best leaders in the world are students. You have to be teachable. That is what I would leave your audience with. The fact that you don't know it all and this all day long, great. But it it is not going to make you Ali Rita. I can tell you that. (laughs) I see people, you know, I tell them your raise becomes effective when you do. Oh, see, I'm about to write that down too. I think yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> you want to raise it? It definitely becomes effective when you do. Yep. I'll tell you what, we got a great audience. Bill Schomburg just showed up. Um, Michelle McLean's on the sidebar. That's my girl. Okay. She's helping me a little bit. Uh, She's Ashley wonderful. MacArthur. She's awesome. Ashley MacArthur loves you. I'll tell you. Um, Christian Salazar. Hey, Christian. I don't know Christian. You don't know Christian? Oh, I yeah. Cars her way, Christian. Cars her way. Well, Christian is um, with Overtake Digital now. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what else I got here. I think I see Damien's picture up there. Damien Boudreau. I didn't see. Oh, yeah. I do see Damien. He's got a little heart. I love yeah. Damien. He and I talked like half my way back from Houston the other day. He is wise, wise, wise. Another one who's been Damien doing Damien is a wise time. man. Absolutely. Right. Andrew Breedlove. Yes. Hi, Andrew. Oh, look at this. We got we got some classy people here. I, well, I mean, what else would we attract? Come oh, on. Oh, oh I've, come on. Okay. I'm looking there. Dame carsherway.com. Damien put it on the sidebar. Thank Absolutely. You, my dear friend. I love him. 
And so good. You can tell Ali like what I was saying, because I love that guy. Oh, my gosh. What a humble, kind human being is Ali Rita. You know, and he doesn't and, and, and he does it one car at a time with the greatest coach in the world, which is Damien, of course. So, you know, success leaves clues, people. Success leaves clues. Anthony Centangelo. Anthony Centangelo. Hi, Anthony. Yeah, he just uh, shared the broadcast. Um, oh, Anthony's yeah. a great supporter of Cars Her Way. We've got uh, how many shares we've got on this thing? Let me take a look. I don't think it's a record yet, but it's got quite a few. Here it comes. Here it comes. Numbers tabulating. We've got 11 shares. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, listen, kid, I think we've been on, we've been on an hour. I know. That's it. That's it. Carsherway.com. Internetbattleplan.com. Carsherway.com. You want training, you go to Internet Battle Plan. You learn from the legends. There are just so many people out there who are false prophets in the world. Damien Boudreau, amazing. Like, Ah, oh, there's something to somebody who's cut their teeth in this business and has real success that they can prove. You know, Frank Crenitti, my good friend, he just put out a mastermind. Good stuff, right? Um, Damien and Ali, Jim Ziegler, like, you know, that that's what I tell people like, oh, I want the magic pill. It doesn't exist. You know, you follow legends, you be a teacher, you show up at the conferences, you, you know, you do your time. If you don't do your time, you're never going to see the success that pay we see. your dues. That's it. That's it. Pay your dues. I had a young guy recently tell me, Mr. Ziegler, I'm going to be where you are. And I, I, looked, I told him, I said, you're never going to be where I'm at. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you don't, you're not willing to pay the price to be me. That's it. That's it. I mean, you think the man at the top of the mountain fell there. Right. <laughs> you know, he helicoptered and he parachuted in. <laughs> no, he clawed every bloody step to the top and was stepped exactly. on and stabbed in the back and told that he couldn't or she couldn't do it. She, she, but then there's a day that she, you mean, you mean girls can do it too? Uh, it, rumor has it. Um, <laughs> but you know, but then there, there is a day where, you know, where we hit the, you know, the top of the mountain and then people are like, Oh, I bet that was easy. Like, really, really? I have really? to wear long sleeves because I have so many bruises and battle scars. Right. So as well, I'll tell you, there's a, there's a lot of women that um, don't realize their potential. They, I know that, that you know, but you're an amazing mentor for so many of them that that I also mentor and Elise Kephart and Bobby Heron and Well, John you know the story about Elise Kephart, don't you? Yes, she loves you. She came and stayed at my house, I don't know, a few months ago. You know how that happened? Did were, were you the one that pulled her out of Starbucks as a barista? No, 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 no. She was working in a dealership uh, San Luis Obispo, California. She was yeah. working in a in a Honda store. And I'm trolling across the internet and I come across some of her videos. Yeah, she's talent. And I I, I said, well, I'd like you to speak at my internet battle plan in Las Vegas. And I and I build her as the YouTube diva. Oh, that was you. Yeah, that was my deal. <laughs> oh my God. She is ab I'm so proud of her. She's absolutely crushing it. She's anyways, I love all those girls. And all of them were just out at Women in Automotive. Uh, Bobby and Jennifer. Mm-hmm. You know, Bobby was with Garber, and I I met her in Detroit, but while she was still with Garber. Right. And I'll tell you what, I have helped a lot of people in different ways, and I don't take credit for any of their talent or careers. They, they've got their own talent. They've got their own careers. But I, I've given them a boost up every time I had a chance. Yes. And I know you have, but especially women. And, and that's, and that's not lost on us at women in automotive. We're so appreciative of you and Debbie and just really leading the way and, and being great role models and mentors um, to so many people, but especially to these women in automotive. So very much appreciated. Very I much. wish I could get Debbie on stage. Right. Debbie has so much knowledge. I know. And but she is afraid. so afraid of speaking. Oh, Get, get, send her to me for a day. I, I, you know, we will. You know, Debbie. Debbie could tell women so much that would help right. them. Right. And one on one, she's wonderful. Right. But I, 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 I have never been able to get her in front of an audience. Well, we're as missing talented, out. As talented as my wife is. Yes, and beautiful. She's prettier than you. Just for the record. Quit it. <laughs> <laughs> She's a better cook too. That's a fact. yes. Yeah, she's prettier. Uh, well, thank you for having you, me on, and thank you for promoting my book. I really appreciate it. Um, it was a labor of love for sure. 
Um, but it was a book that had to be written in my lifetime. So and carsherway.com. Yes. Car, cars her way on Facebook. Cars her way, cars her way. It's always gonna be cars her way, right? And you can find it on Instagram, I bet you. You can just Google Lisa Copeland. I don't know what, but but if y'all do Google me, I'm not the over 50 dating coach. You're but, not? Nope. She's out there too. Trying oh, to hold no. on to my good name. So there you have it. I get I get stuff from those over 50 dating sites all the time. I just, leave me alone. She she like writes for Huffington Post, for HuffPo. Like she's she's pretty renowned. So, you know, people are like, oh, so like is your side hustle? You're the over 50 dating coach? Uh, no. <laughs> no. That's not well, me. That's not well, me. Listen, kid, this is the, <laughs> you are the best guest in the world. I, I, <laughs> Uh, we'll we'll do this some more. Uh, your Absolutely. show, my show, I don't care. Somebody's show. That's right. Somebody's show. We're going to have you on. I know. Um, I think that people are going to, yeah, they're starting to drop off. It's time to peace out. I love all of you guys, Jim. It's this and this to you. I love you, my friend. And thank you for all you do for our industry and everything you've done to um, pave the way for the rest of us. Right. Take and care, all you young ones out there, <laughs> listen to him. There you go. Kirk out. Kirk out. Bye, y'all.